qualities that paintings by, by Vermeer are known for. It's a-okay if you don't already know who Vermeer is. Take your best guess. Just start thinking about um, great artists, because that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Our essential question is, what distinguishes the work of a great artist from just kind of a regular old painter? I'll give you another 30 seconds to finish up your sentence, and then we'll get started. All right. So here's our case file. We are going to be art history detectives today, and so here's your case. Our subject's name is Johann Vermeer. Uh, he was born in Delft in the 1600s, and he's one of the greatest painters of his era, and some would say one of the greatest painters of all time. Uh, his occupation, spoiler alert, was an artist. Uh, he was most famous for depictions of everyday Dutch life and interior scenes, but he also did a couple of landscapes and some biblical scenes as well. So you're going to see a lot of variety in his art, but he's most famous for these sort of interior scenes of women a lot of times, looking very gentle, very soft. Uh, his key attributes as an artist, his use of light is very inspired by another artist we'll see at the very end, Carvaggio, in terms of how he used the light in his paintings. His forms are always very elegant, so he's got very beautiful, soft, as I said, uh, figures in his paintings. And also the texture in his paintings is really unique and very similar. So we're going to take a look at a couple of his other works. Um, in just a second. So here are two interior scenes. A lot of the same room you'll see over and over. He painted a lot inside of his house. Um, so you'll notice a lot of architectural details are the same throughout his paintings. So here are two others. Girl with the Pearl Earring, clearly his most famous work. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen the movie, you really should. It's great. So here's the crime. So in 1937, a Dutch family <coughs> went and approached one of the world's most famous art appraisers with a, a couple of paintings that they had in their family home. This appraiser was convinced. He said to them, you guys have this missing Vermeer. I can't even, I can't believe it. You found it. This is incredible. The family also then started turning up these other paintings that they had in their collection. And the art world was lit aflame. They were so excited that they finally found all of these wonderful Vermeer uh, paintings that had supposedly been lost for years. Um, so this is the painting that they found. So many other unknown works by the artist came to light before World War II. Um, so again, that, that same family and a couple of other families in and around Amsterdam um, discovered that they had these lost Vermeers. Uh, however, World War II happens, there's a lot of upheaval, and unfortunately a lot of art, uh, not just by Vermeer, but by a lot of other painters, were lost or stolen. So after the war, the Allied Arts Commission gets together and they say, we're going to start, we're going to do some serious detective work, and we're going to try to reunite um, lost paintings with their rightful owners. Any questions so far at this point? Because we're getting into really the crime. So however... The Allied Arts Commission is working really hard to reunite these paintings, but they discovered that one painting called Christ and the Woman Taken in Adultery by Vermeer was actually the work of a man named Han van Meegeren, who was just a wealthy painter living in Amsterdam at that time. So the Allied Arts Commission starts getting a little suspicious. And they start doing a little bit of research, and they come to the conclusion that actually many paintings by uh, that were previously thought to be by Vermeer were actually the work of this guy, Han von Meegeren. So this brings us to our big vocab word of the evening, forgery. The action of uh, forging or producing a copy or of a document, signature, banknote, or work of art. So this is just one example of forgery happening. It happens all the time, unfortunately, in the art world. Um, and this van Meegeren scandal was one of the big big scandals around forgery. So it's time for us to get to our activity. So we talked a little bit about Vermeer's use of light, his texture, and his elegant forms. And I wanted to see if you could be as good or better than the um, art appraisers who were working and looking at these uh, paintings in the 1930s. So I have some paintings, and in teams of two, you're going to have to work together, or teams of two, and actually, yeah, teams of two. You guys are going to work together to look at these paintings and figure out uh, which in your pile is by Vermeer, and 
which, if any, are the actually the work of Van Meegeren. So, you guys are going to be detectives number one, and here is your case file. And you will be detectives number two, right, and here are your case files. I'm going to have you be a detective by yourself. Oh, okay. So uh, take just a couple of minutes and we're going to um, talk a little bit, see what you notice about these paintings. Uh, really any, any details that you're noticing uh, will be relevant, so make sure to talk with your partner about what you're seeing. Findings to the group. So, uh, detectives number one, what are we thinking? So, first of all, just show our your paintings to everybody because we all had different paintings. Oh, we all had different paintings. Oh, oh my god. god. So, here, I'm going to pull the third one. These are our paintings, and we determined that these two are Vermeer. So what, uh, what led you to that conclusion? Well, the play on light is very present in this painting certainly um, also present like less obvious because this has the source of light in it but this one is a little bit more diffuse but you know girl with the pearl being also diffuse does not include we were a little worried about because of the dark background here but it, but once again like you know just because he likes light doesn't mean that his paintings are always bright exactly um, we also noticed the uh, texture on the painting in the background here um, is very like very worn and weathered um, that can be fake but it might be a point in its authenticity. This piece, however, um, the brush strokes seem too smooth, uh, the light seems uneven, and there's no, and you don't get a sense of where the light could be coming from or what. Like, this seems like a very natural light. This one, you know, obviously coming through a yellow, yellow window, so that's, that accounts for the, the light there. This one, very little, and clearly in the background, it's nighttime. This doesn't really come across as candle flame. And the characters don't feel like Yeah. Yes. Do you want to say it? You don't have to, but... Well, oh no, that's fine. Um, so, I would say that, so I've got these three. We got these three. <laughs> and I'm, off the initial, I'm going to say that uh, these are not veneer, uh, veneer. It, um, in fact, we're looking at, uh, with the one that you have, the other Christ figure that you have, the, uh, these are just way too similar figures right there. Um, you are also looking at, um, uh, and I too went and looked at the character faces right away, and these two character women are too uh, similar, I think, the Magdalene uh, character and this one. Um, now, if this is Vermeer, which I was kind of hedging on, because again, I think this is not clean enough for his work. If it is, it might be his early, one of his earlier pieces. Um, so I was going to go ahead and just give it benefit of the doubt that this might be earlier Vermeer. All right. So uh, you each have two Vermeers and one Van Meegeren. So it's Ooh. the um, the less refined. You guys were a spot on for your Van Meegeren assessment. So good job, good job, detectives. And it is it is very challenging. This was something that stumped the art world um, for years. So I, I just think it's a very interesting activity. Um, so all famous artists have one or two key attributes to help you identify their work. 
Um, Caravaggio, who was one of Vermeer's um, great inspirations, has a lot of non-idealized form, so a lot of um, realistic looking people, and uh, he's always known for a beautiful light coming from an unseen source. So if you can see a candle or a light source in a painting, it is not by Caravaggio. Uh, similarly, and this is one of my favorite pieces of art history trivia, Jacopo Bassano. If someone is showing their butt to the viewer, <laughs> it is a Bassano. In uh, grad school, we called him Butts Bassano. So if you ever see a painting uh, with the derriere in front of the, the viewer, it's a Bassano. So finally, I'd like to do a little quick Kahoot review. So I'd like you to pull out either a computer or your smartphone. And we're going to go to Kahoot.it. Right, and our uh, code to enter is 93340. 640 or 640? 640, 640, sorry. It won't let me in. Yeah, me neither. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. So try. Do, do, do. All right, it's the new pin, that's why. All right, 713730. All right, we're gonna start. Four super quick questions, just to review, review what we've learned. So, is this a painting by Vermeer? Oh, oh I see, okay. Now, excellent, good job. I'm in second place behind Jesus. Oh, it's timed? <laughs> wow. So is this a painting by Vermeer? Beautiful. Wonderful job, guys. Oh, James, once again, the shapes are what's throwing me off. Yeah. <laughs> is this a painting by Vermeer? This is a gimme. <laughs> Even though I saw the movie, I still don't know. Okay, good. Anyone knows? So finally, what are two key features that help art historians identify paintings by Vermeer? And we listed three, so read the questions. It's a little bit trickier. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. So James, you are the winner of today's Kahoot. Well done. Um, Thank you guys very much. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm a really big fan of art history, and uh, I hope that next time you're at a museum, you take a look and see if you can spot a painting by Vermeer or Caravaggio, or even Butts Bassan. <laughs>